Welcome to Women in the Middle Entrepreneurs, the podcast that gives you an unfiltered behind the scenes look at what it's really like being a woman in the middle who's over 50 and following her entrepreneurial dreams. Grab a superhero cape, girlfriend, because you deserve one. I'm your host, Master Certified Life Coach and Midlife Mentor, Susie Rosenstein, and I am excited to inspire you with interviews that feature all of this midlife amazingness. Let's go. Hey there, welcome back to the show. We have another really exciting interview ahead of us about having an energy healing business on the side while in corporate, and then finally moving it to the front burner with joy. Today, you'll be meeting Carol Walkner, a woman in the middle entrepreneur who's an energy healer, Reiki master, clairvoyant, medical intuitive, and life quantum catalyst coach who moves people from where they are to where they dream to be, blasting blocks, traumas, et cetera, that have kept them stuck. Welcome to the show, Carol. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm so delighted to be here, Susie. I really appreciate this opportunity. Oh, I'm so glad you're here too. We're going to have fun. I know we're going to have a great conversation about your midlife entrepreneur story. We're going to be talking about your business and what's going really well, and also what midlife issues might be getting in your way to some extent and might be challenging for you in your life, as well as being a business owner. So let's get things started. How old are you? How long have you been an entrepreneur? And what do you do? How do you serve in the world? Take it away. All right. Well, I don't look it, of course, but I'm 78 years old. And I have been an entrepreneur for 70 years. I had my first business at age eight with a lemonade stand on the corner of a big city in New Jersey. And when that kind of petered out a little bit, I added baseball cards and candy and other confections. And we have to kind of slide with the with the times. And I was making a lot of money even then at eight years old. Oh my gosh, I love that story so much. I can't even stand it. <laughs> That's so good. 70 years. Well, you were an entrepreneur from the beginning. From the beginning. Yes. Yes. And throughout my life, actually, I was in corporate America for 35 years. I call myself a refugee from corporate America. And it gave me a huge lifestyle, helped me put my son through school and really give me a really good life and a wonderful career. And I retired in 09 and then switched. So I do some of that corporate business on the side still. And then I could bring forward the energy healing that I had been doing since the 80s and discovered mediumship and took a mediumship um, course. So And then realized I was a medical intuitive because people would ask me questions and I have x-ray vision. I could say, oh, that's what's wrong here. Let me fix it. (laughs) So things just evolve in a wonderful way. That's so interesting that that this used to be a part time gig and the corporate was full time and now you've switched it. That's beautiful. What a way to really appreciate your transferable skills. And then I get to do this for forever because what I discovered during COVID uh, as a Reiki master, I don't have to have someone right here on my table working on them. They can be on the other side of the world and I can tune into their energy and balance it and figure things out. And so I have clients all over the world now and I get to make a difference for so many women. How did you figure that out? Do you do you work on Zoom? Yeah, Zoom and sometimes FaceTime or sometimes phone. I have some clients who do not want to be seen on Zoom, so I'm over the phone. And the minute we connect, whether it's here or wherever, I tune in to their energy and just cocoon myself. And so I'm totally with them as if they are right here next to me and I can literally feel their energy. That's fascinating. Did it surprise you that Zoom was effective or the phone or these other ways? Very much so. It's like the first time we were, I was on FaceTime actually with a client and she goes, oh, my shoulder hurts. And I said, oh, that's your mother, that's mother energy here. Let me help you. Over the phone, I went like that and she goes, Oh, it's gone. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I found that the COVID was definitely and continues to be a big part of our lives to some extent or another, depending on the season. But there were definitely some interesting things that happened as a result of COVID. And I think Zoom and working off site, you know, it, it really opened up so many doors. And it didn't occur to me that your door would be included in that kind of thing, right? So I love to hear that you were also a little surprised. Very surprised. And you're right. You know, we talk about getting zoomed out. I have my computer glasses, so I don't get tired. And it brings you here into my office and me into your place. And yeah. that's the exciting part. It's almost like we're right here, even though we're on the other side of the world from each other. We're really right next to each other, literally or figuratively, but it feels literal. Yeah, it does. And I, I guess I realized that too. Um, during COVID, there were two funerals I attended online. One of them was a military service of a, of an uncle in his nineties. And it was a freezing cold day. And it was an outdoor, you know, it was the outdoor cemetery, um, on Zoom. I couldn't believe I could be there to hear the, the trumpet or cornet, whatever military service. It was unbelievable. And another one was like a mem like a like where you were what's it called? Like a celebration of life. Yeah. Um on Zoom with lots of people. And it was beautiful. I could not believe that something like that was helped by Zoom. And now you are using Zoom and the phone and everything else, and it doesn't matter where people are, in a way where I thought you did need to be right next to each other. Fascinating. Very, very and wonderful. I get to help more people. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about your work. What's a typical, like an ideal client for you, somebody who's looking for the kind of help that you offer? My ideal client is, I would say 99% of my clients are women. They're between 45 and 65, and they're facing a challenge or a spot in their life where they're at a crossroad and they're they want to build their business. They want to get out of a marriage. They want to help. Uh, they're caught in the middle, maybe helping aged parents and having teenagers. There's just so many things going on in the in life that they didn't expect, or they thought life would look like this, and it looks <laughs> like this. Right. So, so I'm here to help them bridge that gap and really help them through the crossroads with clarity, direction, information from in a clairvoyant way from the spirit world and the angels. And what we discovered, my Reiki master and I years ago, was that when we feel stuck in our life and it's not, it could be maybe not our trauma. It could be an ancestral trauma. Old Aunt Tilly never dealt with the trauma that she had, and it carried through. And I can tell the difference between yours and theirs, and I can remove it from your DNA, and you are allowed to move forward. It feels like magic, and it sounds preposterous, and I've done it so many times, I know it works. And I've seen people light up like, oh, I feel lighter. I'm different. Thank you. Wow. And give us an example of, of one of your clients that really, really stands out from a big transformation. One of my coaching clients had a traumatic childhood, and we had five coaching sessions. We did it in person, and the coaching is a combination of practices that I've put together myself over the years, Reiki, the mediumship, the clairvoyance. So it's a combination of everything. And what we did, and I also have a master's degree in expressive arts therapy. So we, I use some experiential exercises and an art modality. And we found we uncovered the little girl before her childhood trauma. And we brought that little girl who was healthy and whole up to the surface kind of dissipated the traumatized little girl. And this woman's in her middle 50s. 
her whole face changed. Her whole body presence changed. And it's like, she was like deer in the headlights, like, whoa, what just happened? I don't know, but it was fabulous. It sounds like that's the response from a lot of your clients. Like it's almost magical, powerful, fast. And yes, and some people come back and come back. But even after one session, most of my clients will say, I feel lighter. I feel better. A friend of mine and a client has recurring headaches and shoulder pain. And she's here in person in Cincinnati. And and she goes, oh, my left shoulder is hurting me. Guy, Okay, come over here. So I pull out the pain. She goes, okay, thank you. And we move on. <laughs> so, okay. So another thing I love talking about on this podcast, and, and this is really the core of the podcast, is how do the successes and ex- and challenges that your experience that you experience reflect your age and stage so being at our age and stage as women in the middle you know we have so much to give so much wisdom so much um desire to be fulfilled and to really give back and sometimes things get in the way there are successes and there are some hiccups so what is one of the things that comes up for you in terms of a challenge that is related to your age and stage? My give a darn factor is really low. (laughs) The older I get, the lower it gets. And some days I just don't want to work anymore, so I don't. And and I get tired some days, and I get cranky some days and say, I'm done for the day, or I'm not working for the next two days. And I used to have a type A personality, and thank goodness that's gone. So the challenge, sometimes the challenge is I want to do so much and I have this whole list of, okay, I'm revising my coaching program. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And it's like, oh, I'm too tired. I'm just, I'm out, I'm out of energy myself. And so I go have a glass of wine instead. (laughs) It's it's later in the day. It's not 10 o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Well, you're listening to what you want and need better. Yeah. Yeah. That's really it, right? It sounds like you're able to really dial that in. And it doesn't surprise me with the work that you do to be able to hear and sense what it is that you really want. But the trick is that you're honoring it, which is huge for women. That's for sure. And sometimes I get messages for myself and I don't listen at all. They have to yell at me. Like, hello, can you hear me? (laughs) Now, tell me about your grandchildren. You mentioned in your show notes that, um, you know, you really would love to travel more and visit your grandchildren more. And that's something I hear a lot on this podcast, that we were so committed to our businesses and to helping and giving back and giving at a high level. And so many uh, have other places that they want to be. So what's that like for you? So I I finally figured most of that out so, because my business is portable. So I can literally heal, do the, do the work I do from anywhere. So I live in Ohio. My grandchildren live with my son and daughter-in-law in Southern California. So the good news is I get to go there in the winter. Oh, yes. <laughs> and some of it is just figuring out This feels like home base. I have clients in New Jersey, which is where I was from, and friends. So I go back there. So it's literally splitting myself in three and going, being in different places. And sometimes it's exhausting. And sometimes it's like, I want to just go jump on the trampoline with the kids, but I have to work this afternoon. So. Tell me more about the way you split your time. Do you carve up the year and stay long periods of time or do you just allow yourself to travel when you want to? How do you manage that? So I used to, before COVID, I would go five or six times to California for short stays. Then then I didn't go for a year and a half. Since COVID, I go, I've been going a couple months in the winter and back and forth. And It feels like a lot sometimes. So this year I was two and a half months in California, 
two weeks in New Jersey, some time here. Now I'm going back to Jersey. I've been back to California a couple of times. Then I'm going back on Thanksgiving. So it's like ooh, around and around. When I was in my 30s, I said, I want to live in three different places. And so I actually live in one place, but I get to visit the other two. And it's like, be careful what you ask for, because you just may get it. <laughs> but it's delightful. I'm happy that it works this way. Wow, that's so interesting. And when you're visiting these places, do you visit, do you stay at the same place? Are you making it kind of like home? with a base or are you still experimenting? How are you handling that? I love what you're doing. I need to hear more. I'm very, very fortunate. I have dear friends in New Jersey and they say, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. So I have one dear, dear friend who would be a great podcast interviewee for you, um, Mary Beth. And I stay with her and she has a huge home and she's the best hostess with the most. And I can go from her place to clients and a friend of mine owns a boutique store. So I work in her back room doing messages and doing readings and working on people. And when I'm in California, I met a, another dear friend a few years ago. So I stay with her while I'm out there. She has a large home too. And if it's a longer period of time, I'll pay her to stay there. and. Sometimes I've shipped my car to California because it's cheaper than renting a car if I'm going to be there for a couple months. And I've just figured out how to make it work. And it's people love me to stay with them. I love to stay there. It's better than a hotel or an Airbnb. And it it works. And it's it's about the connection and the women friends. And oh, I love it. I love it. I, I also have people in Southern California that I get to visit and I'm just delighted when I can work there or host a retreat there or do something that just makes it more of a place for me to hang out to. Yeah. 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 And my friend in California, her house is large enough. I have my own living room and bedroom. So I work upstairs and I could be on this call and you, I could be there. You wouldn't even know it. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, that's so great for you. Another thing you mentioned in your notes is that you're working with a sales coach to work on scaling up your business. So what's it like to work with a sales coach? So her name is Julia Pimsler. She's the most fabulous person on the planet. <laughs> I adore her. And she's just, it's changed my life. So the reason... I'm working with her is I designed a coaching program eight years ago. I wrote a book, a book workbook, was doing coaching in person for a few years and then stopped because my energy business just exploded. And so now I'm revising the program, putting it online as a group program. And so she's helping me really pushing me, helping me figure out curriculum and the best way to present it. Who's my audience? She's really making me, I thought I knew all the answers to because I've been doing this for a while, but she's helping me hone in more clearly on who is my audience. How, how might I help them best? What will be the outcome and what's this at stake if they don't take my program or don't sign up for my coaching program. So I'm, I'm revising my curriculum. We're going to work on marketing for the next two sessions. And it's just amazing. And, and she's fun and she's just, she's delightful. And I would recommend her to the whole world. And it's wow. That's a powerful table. referral. Very nice. So being um, a solopreneur, you really love the fact that you can work from anywhere and you've done a great job of visiting family and friends and working online. Do you have any idea of some place that you really want to visit and kind of have a laptop lifestyle that's different than your routine of New Jersey and California? 
Oh, yes, Paris. I'm practicing French every day. I grew up speaking French. Now it's coming back. I imagine myself sitting on some fancy boulevard in Paris with my laptop at a cafe, eating a croissant, drinking coffee. (laughs) I love it. And what year would you like to do that? Tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Soon. Soon. My son turns 50 next year, and I would love to take the whole family there for a couple of weeks. So that's, oh, that's wonderful. That's an intention. So I might just, oh, you're leaving? Okay, I think I'll stay. <laughs> oh, that's great. So in terms of your business and what you want next, would it be your group? Is that the thing that you're wanting to develop next? That's the next thing. And just to keep on doing also doing the individual energy work and and the the clients that I have, the clairvoyance that's kind of all packed together. But trying this coaching as a probably an eight-week group is exciting to me. And it feels like the next step. And I'm really good at holding containers and I do I've done a lot of group things smaller and more in person. So to do something online is a is a little bit a stretch for me and it's time to stretch. I'm five foot two. I need to get bigger. Carol, I didn't even tell you I'm only four ten. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. What would you say the most surprising thing is about being at your age and stage and being an entrepreneur? Has anything surprised you about this phase of your life with all your extra wisdom? I get to have fun and I've learned time blocking. And I've learned a lot of things and I, I used to be a workaholic and that's probably starting with my, my lemonade stand (laughs) 70 years ago. And I take Friday afternoons off. I play mahjong on Friday afternoons. I take Saturday afternoons and sun all day Sunday off. So I'm actually taking time off and I get to design my life the way I want. And to do things like this with you. And that's the most exciting thing is like, I get to do, I get to help people. I get to have fun. I get to spend time with people I care about and love. And I just, I get to have the life that I've always wanted. Mm. How powerful is that, man? I get to have the life I've always wanted. It's really something. You earned it. You know, you worked hard. You developed a lot of skills along the way, and then you discovered a lot of skills because of your curiosity. And, you know, it was that willingness and and creative spirit to have uh, a side gig all those years, too. Yeah. I mean, that really your love of entrepreneur being an entrepreneur was started so young and that even as a busy corporate cog. (laughs) <laughs> you you kept it going. I love that. I love that. Um, one of the things you talked about is, is procrastination. And you said that that intersection of being over 50 and running a business and actively being challenged by these classic midlife issues that you knew you were a good fit for this podcast because of some procrastination and the desire not to work so hard. And I love that, but wanting to have bigger value in the world and making a difference. And that really stands out and you figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. And I'm so excited about this. I joined an accountability group from with a friend of mine in Toronto. Really? Yes. And we do goal setting and accountability. She has a group of us every Monday from 9.30 to noon, and no more procrastination. I can take that off of my my badge of whatever here. Because <laughs> uh, I used to have a pile over here at the left of my desk of, okay, I'll get to this tomorrow, next week, tomorrow, next week. And in her group, we, in that 10 to 12 time frame, we, for an hour and a half, we do what we say we were going to do. That whole list that I was procrastinating about for three months, I did it that first Monday. Isn't that incredible how we make it worse than it really is? We totally did. 
do. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that today. I don't want to do that. Wah, wah, wah. No, no wah, wah, wah anymore. Just do it. <laughs> I guess one of the things I learned, uh, I really learned in doing, I got laid off the year I turned 50. So in the last 10 years is that I have some odd ideas about discipline. The way I think about discipline is negative, but really discipline gives you the freedom that you want to live your life the way you want to. Yeah. So somewhere yeah. along the line, I got it mixed up and I always catch myself thinking in a way that that's a little wonky for what I want to accomplish. So <laughs> Good to know. So how can people best get in touch with you? So I have a website, carolwalkner.com. I have information and reels and all kinds of interesting things on there. I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook with my name. My email address, best one, is carolwalkner888 at gmail. Eight is a very powerful number because it's infinity. And my phone number and everything else is on my website. And I had new photography done last year. so. How exciting. I know. An hour in the makeup chair and two cans of hairspray and you look great. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, my gosh. You can't see Carol. She's like dancing around here about how much fun the photo shoot was. I had a photo shoot a couple of months ago as well. And oh, boy, those pictures are nice. (laughs) They are, right? Yeah. It's like, woo. A little help. (laughs) A little help goes a long way. Amazing. Well, Carol, thank you so much for taking the time from your day and sharing all of this. I really appreciate how you have been an entrepreneur from the start and how you've incorporated it into whatever you're doing in whatever ratio seem to work best and the way that you're helping midlife women. It's amazing. So I I just love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susie. I love your podcast and what you're doing too. We're all in this together. Oh yeah. Thank you so much. All right, that is it for now. If you're listening and loving what you hear, please like and subscribe. Reviews are great too and much appreciated. And if you're a woman in the middle who's 50 or over and an entrepreneur and would also like to come on the show, please go to www.midlifeinterviews.com and fill out an application. We'd love to have you on to share your story. So thanks so much for listening. It's never too late for you to put yourself on your agenda. I'm Susie Rosenstein, and I'll talk to you again soon. Now, real quick before we say goodbye, if you are connecting with this show, I'd love to invite you to a happiness breakthrough coaching session. It's my laser focused coaching call that will help you get clear about what's getting in your way as a woman in the middle entrepreneur and confident about your next steps to more happiness in your next chapter. Head over to www.nextchapterbreakthrough.com. Talk to you soon.